Yes. What are you doing? I am applying the mud or the sheetrock, if you will, which is what solidifies the structure and makes it basically uh, impervious to harm. And it should make it um, last for posterity, basically. This is just like uh, plastering your wall. So what is this made of? Garden variety styrofoam, you get this from Home Depot. Okay, so but I know when you purchase it from Home Depot, it's not in this shape. No, it's that shape. Stop it. <laughs> get out. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so what are you doing? You're just putting pieces of styrofoam on top of one another? Mm -hmm. And then I just carve it out. Yes. Martin is so creative. Thank you. How do you know how to do this? Um, it just came naturally. I, I did it when I was in uh, sixth grade when my mother had a uh, brand new washer and dryer, I think it was. Came in a box. And I just looked at it and I was fascinated by it, so I started doing it. You were fascinated by the box? No, by the, by the styrofoam. styrofoam inside of the box? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, back then the thing was superheroes. And I remember making Fantastic Four, the thing, and all of those stuff, the Hulk. And my mother thought I was crazy because I was taking what she thought was junk. And she saw what I was doing with it. She left me alone because it wasn't junk. Wow. So this is just like literally a gift. I never learned it from anybody. I just kind of picked it up. So you never took formal classes or anything? Not for this. I mean, I took classes to um, show me how to upsize. Mm -hmm. to, to, so how, how to... You took classes to show you how to make them like life size. Bigger, yes. Because before you were doing the smaller versions. Desktops. And then you said, I want to make them bigger. Start taking them bigger scale. My goodness. Okay. Wow. There's an elephant behind me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Martin. It is what it is. This is amazing. It's not done yet, but yes, it's, it's coming. Now. This is amazing for, okay, for something like this, about how long do you think it took you? About a month. About a month, from start to finish? Probably, yeah. Okay, so talk to me about the process. What are you doing at the very beginning? Do you draw it out first? I should have did it the first time, and that's, that's how you should do it. You should, should draw everything out you do from various angles. It's like a house, you gotta design, you know, blueprint and so on. If you don't do it, you'll do it out of your memory, which is always suspect. Mm, ah, write the vision and make it plan. Make it plan. Right, understood. So you done all of these? These were all done. I'm literally in all. I'm like, literally. Now these right here, those are not styrofoam though. So what are these? These are all foil. I'm sorry? Aluminum foil. So what gave you the idea to create animals out of aluminum foil? Um, my kindergarten teacher, actually. Uh-huh. Not animals, but to create pyramid. This is what they all look like before I start. This is so amazing, Mark. So what you're telling me is that it started from here. From there. From this, and then it grew into that. Yes. The power of the mind. That's so amazing. I'm like in awe. When I was in kindergarten, I used to mold clay. And my teacher was like, you mold so well. You mold. And I was like, what the heck is that? Right. What did she say? And I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. And um, probably about nine months later, I was watching a um, commercial for Reynolds Rapper, and they said it shapes, it molds. So I heard heard the word before. I was like, okay, I got that word now. So they're taking it, it's just like the thing along the ridge of the bowl and the foil is molding to it. And so it connected. Okay, that's what you meant by mold. It molds to the shape, right? And I went and got some of my um, mom's foil and I, I balled it up. And it remained a ball. Uh -huh. That's how it got started. Oh my God! That's how it all started. And now here you are at URC. Creating an entire safari. safari. I felt like I just rhymed. Who you are, QRC, create the whole safari. So, okay, so talk to me about the beginning of this and how you connected with the pastor. Well, um, Ian is the, is the common thread, Ian. And I came over here at his behest. And he said, uh, 
you should come check out the pastor because he's, you know, yada, yada, yada. He's yes. cool, yada, yada, yada. But when I got over here, the first thing I saw on the wall was Ubuntu. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, um, having read that word before, I never internalized it. So then I'm reading it and I'm looking at the pictures. And he said, basically, I am that you are. And I was like, wow. Okay, so that was an instant connection right there. Yeah. Because most um, pastors, when they connect the motherland, they go straight to Egypt. And that's kind of like well-worn, you know, the eye of Horus and all that, the pyramids and everything. And he had gotten beyond that. Because I've I got way beyond that myself, all that Egyptian stuff, Humanic and so on and so on. He went down to the baser stuff of Africa. The entire African diaspora. Which is what connected me, me to him spiritually. Yeah. And it connected right away. I was like, okay, here's somebody that I can talk to that won't be um, offended. Right. And won't be put off by this discussion. Because too often we take our own heritage for granted. But he said something to me that resonated in my spirit. He said, we are a displaced people. And I've never heard a phrase like that. We are a displaced people. And I was thinking that is my life story. Somebody that's um, not quite fitting in any niche. Nobody can really accurately categorize me. They've tried. And even when I was in college, they were trying to tell me, you should do this and you should do that. And I'm like, that's not what I do though. And what I do is a little different. And uh, conventional stuff kind of bores me. Because I had already been doing stuff since I was six years old. So why would I just start something now and discard what I already do? So what I did was introduce them to my stuff. <laughs> and now it's part of the curriculum now. <laughs> so I'm like, you know. You did not conform. I did not. And as you can probably see how my appearance is, I'm not a conformist. <laughs> now what do you call this app? That's an Okapi. Say it one more time. Okapi. O-K-A-P-I. I've never heard of an Okapi. There are only maybe about four or 5,000 left in the wild. They've been basically exterminated. Okay, so as you're telling me this, do you know a lot about the animals that you have sculpted? And if you know, how did you get this education? Encyclopedias. My mom bought them when I first started school, and I had my head in those, in those books ever since I could read. Really? So you like just were genuinely interested in this stuff? Yes. That's amazing. And it wasn't taught to you, it was just something that was placed in your spirit at a very young age. Young age, yes. What's his name? That's a columbus mark. Black and white columbus mark. It's a little dusty because I've been working around here with the, all the, um, the sheet rock and everything. And so what is this made from? Foil. Just nothing but foil? And sheet rock. Foil and sheet rock and paint. Okay. What about the eyes? Same thing. And so talk to me about the display that uh, you all plan on doing. We plan on taking uh, all of these this collection of animals right here and put them into an environment that's similar to the natural environment so that when you walk among them, you get a safari experience. I don't want it to look like a zoo or a circus, but a safari and, uh, experience so that you are transplanted to that place when you get there. You know, you've been home, basically. I'm not trying to make it look like some kind of an exhibition. I want it to be an experience. So will there be music? Will you hear waterfalls? Will you hear music? I mean... That's part of the plan. Okay. All the ambiance and everything is all uh, the animal sound effects, the music, um, the narration mm -hmm. as you go along. We have a uh, sister that's actually uh, African. Oh, yes. So her um, accent is, is, is what it is. I got one last question. Let's try to keep it short as we wrap up. Okay. What do you what do you hope people take away from this once they see your work? Um, dream big. Dream big. That says it all right there. It's dream big. Dream big. Everybody out there, dream big. And thank you so very much just for allowing me to come and talk to you and, and, and lay my hands and my eyes on your wonderful creation. You're doing such awesome work. Thank you. Thank you. This is the best.
Can I take it? Yes, you can take it. <laughs>